Okay, so the next model we're going to put together is going to be the instruction box. As I mentioned in class, as we looked at this a little bit, uh, you want to consider your base feature. What is going to be your base feature? You have to have something in here in order to put a fillet on and your holes in your shell. So we're essentially going to be creating a rectangular extrude. And uh, if you think about the planes over here that we're going to be using, this front view implies that we're going to be sketching an initial rectangle on the, the front plane, or we could. And we're going to consider the dimension of 95 along the bottom horizontally, and then the vertical dimension is going to be this guy over two, uh, over here, two of 102 millimeters. And then we could do that. We're going to make it that we're going to extrude that out by 48 inches, and we're going to do mid plane. So unlike the cone where we started on the top plane and we went off in one direction, this time we're going to do a mid plane so we have an equal amount of material to the front as we would in the back. So let's consider that. Open up your millimeter uh, template file and make sure you resave that as uh, you know in a proper folder uh, with the junction box name on it. And one thing about the template files, make sure you look at the video 13 on the website in order to get everything into the template file that uh, is going to be required for the class. We're going to make a couple different uh, changes and modifications to it too as the quarter rolls on. And remember, it's just a pseudo template file. It's not a real template file because SolidWorks won't let you do it in the lab. It's the way CWU has, that, has it set up. So we're going to save it as a part file, but open up that part file every time you need to uh, open up a file and uh, create something in uh, SolidWorks as a part. So we're going to start with the front plane. We're going to go to sketch. This time we're going to do center rectangle, a little bit different. Pick at the origin. If we pick the origin, we know it's always going to be in the middle there, and sketch that out. And then uh, escape once, smart dimension. Remember, this is going to be 95. This is going to be 102. And as you put this together, you'll notice that the blue lines uh, turn black as we define that. So we're going to take that dimension. We're going to drop that in place. We're going to make that 102. And now we're going to extrude it. So we're going to go to features. Extrude a boss space. Now remember, we're going to do mid-plane. We don't want to favor one direction or the other. So instead of blind up here, we're going to go to mid-plane. And now we're going to type in 48, I believe, was the value there. And go to the green check mark. Before we go any further, let's go ahead and check our uh, drawing. And we probably should do this uh, first. Again, starting from the very top, moving our way down. Kind of anxious about getting started here, but uh, we need to make sure we put in uh, the proper material, which is going to be plain carbon steel. You always have to have material in here, otherwise you're not going to get the, the appropriate values. So right here, we don't have to go back into, you know, into edit material. If you right-click on that, we could just pick uh, plain carbon steel in the shortcut menu. I think there's 11 items in that, and the most frequently used ones are going to be in there. So plain carbon steel. You notice it kind of looks a little bit different. It kind of has a shine to it. If you have uh, certain settings on, you don't have to do real view graphics. So if you go to the heads up view toolbar and you have perspective on or shadows and stuff like that, I wouldn't turn that off. And it's a good idea to turn that off. Uh, let's turn those off and that way it's a little bit easier to work with. That way you don't have something that's really bright or white or something that's black due to the reflectivity of uh, whatever you might be uh, sketching on and the material you chose. So there's our rectangle, and let's go ahead and check uh, that to our drawing. Let's go to Mass Properties again. So if you go to Evaluate, Mass Properties, and uh, let's go to our options in here. Custom Settings, I think we want to do three. Let's toggle that up all the way to the, all the, way to the right. And then let's check our drawing uh, to make sure that uh, we're going to be looking at that correctly. So it looks like three uh, units after the decimal over here. And the mass is going to be 3627.936 grams. 3627.936 grams. And then the center of mass, right there in the middle. So it's going to be 000, zero, zero because we did a mid plane extrusion and all the planes intersect our model that you see in the background. Uh, the center of gravity is going to middle that too. So that's what we have so far. So now we're going to put in a fillet. So we have a feature fillet down here. It's going to be all along the back edges. So we're going to pick uh, that back surface back here. And then these four edges on our block. In order to put that in, and the value is going to be six and a half millimeters. Okay, so let's close out our properties manager. Go up here to features and uh, look for fillet. 6.5 for the value in here, so we're going to type in 6.5 in our properties manager. Items to fillet, we can click on that face here, then these edges. So that edge, that edge. Neat thing about this is you can click that edge through the other edges. That's pretty cool. So we're going to go ahead and click that edge, and the yellow gives us a preview. You want to make sure that the full preview is on. 
and that's going to do that. So if you go to that green check mark, go back to evaluate. Uh, let's go to mass properties again to make sure we have the right values in here. So now it's uh, 3587.927. See if that matches. Now 3587.927, that looks good. And then the uh, z-axis is off by a little bit because we favored the back rather than the front. We took some material off the back. So now, you know, the center mass has kind of moved forward a little bit by 6.743 millimeters. Right, am I reading the right one? So side fillet. So I have Z, yeah, here it is, right down here. So Z is off by 0 0.166. I was reading the wrong values in there. And that uh, matches the drawing over here too. So there it is. I was reading the bottom line. Okay, so that's uh, good. Again, uh, the thing with the mass properties, you know you're doing it correctly if you get the mass properties as you go. And um, you want to check that uh, every time you do that. So every step, when you see these steps in here, check your mass properties. Okay, the next item is going to be shell. We're going to be uh, clicking on the front face. Shell is going to have a uh, three millimeter uh, thickness to it. So now we're going to go over here to uh, our feature tab. We're going to go ahead and include choose shell. And the value up here defaults to 10. We're going to make that three. And we're going to click on this surface over here. Right click. And it will give us a green check mark, a green check mark in another way. And now we have our shell. So this might be a good time to rename our features. We didn't do that in the last video, and I really like the idea of our renaming our features. So we're going to call that top feature, not Basque. Uh, we're going to call that our base feature, or just base. Fillet, we're going to call that our back fillet. And uh, backside fillet, perhaps. And you want to make uh, sure you look at the drawing that I provide you on uh, on the website and try to uh, you know try to emulate those uh, names in there too. And the objective of renaming these, if you have somebody else working on your part or evaluating your part, like what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be able to find my way around. If I'm looking for the fillet or a shell, if you have more than one shell or more than one hole, I want to know what kind of hole or where that hole is over here in the future manager tree. So that was our side fill, and in the shell, we're going to call that our front shell. Okay, let's do more stuff. Okay, so let's check our mass properties. So if you go to evaluate again, go to mass properties, it's going to rem remember our settings. And uh, we have a mass of uh, 60.037 grams, and that looks like it matches our drawing over here. And then uh, the center of mass is going to be that value I looked at before, uh, minus 6.743. So that's got that value in there too. And uh, it's because we're taking material out of the back, so the center of mass is shifting a little bit to the, to the, to the back also. And that's a negative uh, 6.743, so that works out pretty well too. So let's do our back holes. So I'm suggesting over here in the drawing, if you take a look at this, uh, we did our uh, our base feature, our side fillet, our front shell. Now we're going to do back holes, and then uh, we're, and the back holes can be seen over here in the front view. So you're going to have to take a look at a couple different views in here. We know that the holes are going to be five uh, millimeters, but we want them centered in here. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to make them uh, 76 uh, millimeters apart. It's going to be centered right in the middle of our uh, object. So we're going to have to put in some uh, reference geometry, some center lines, which are going to help us uh, line up those holes. So remember those values, 5 millimeters and then 76 millimeters apart. So we're going to take this face and we're going to be, uh, make that uh, normal too. So if we go up here to our heads up view toolbar, go to view orientation, go to the normal to button, that way we're looking at it square on. We're going to go ahead and sketch this out. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to go up here to the sketch tab. We're going to go up here to the line command, and we're going to scroll down a little bit by going to that down arrow. We're going to go to center line, and we what we want to do is we want to go ahead and put a uh, center line right down the middle of this. So we're going to go ahead and select into this face to do that, and then we're going to go up here to center line and we're going to sketch it out. So we have our origin right here in the middle. And we're going to not going to sketch right from the origin. We're going to go off a little bit to the side. You'll notice that we have witness lines that come out from that. And if we sketch through the origin by way of those witness lines, it's going to put that out there. So you'll notice that we have a couple sketch relations which are going to appear right next to the cursor. We have a coincident one, which is going to be coincident with the origin. And then we have a horizontal one right next to that. So take a look at that. They're yellow right now. Yellow is a preview color, remember. And as soon as we drop that into place, those sketch relations now are in there. So now we have a coincident sketch relation, 
and a horizontal one. So let's do one more thing. What we want to do is we want to take the midpoint of that line by selecting that line with a cursor and right clicking on it. We're going to select midpoint and then with the control key to press we're going to click on the origin and we're going to make those uh, coincident with each other. So that sketches that out. So when we put a circle on top, just like an AutoCAD, we're going to go ahead and mirror that down to the bottom. Now we're going to do something very similar. We're going to go up to Sketch. Start a line, we're going to make a vertical one this time. Sketch that down. Right click on that line, we're going to select Midpoint, the Origin again with the Control key. Make this coincident. So now we have uh, some sketch geometry in here, some reference geometry that we could use. So now if we put in one hole, one circle, and remember that circle is going to be five millimeters. We're going to put uh, we put it right on top of that line. So now we have that coincident relationship. We're going to put a, a dimension on that of five millimeters. And now we need to define where that hole is going to be in reference to this uh, line. So we're going to take that circle and put a dimension on that circle and the center line and watch this. If we put it on this side, it's considered a uh, half dimension. If you put it on that side, it's a double dimension. So one side to the other side. And what we want to do is we want to snap it to the other side so it's going to define where that next hole is going to be. And if we drop that into place, we're going to make that 76. And that lines up that first hole. So now we have that 5 millimeter dimension, 76 millimeter dimension, with our two center lines in here with a use as a reference geometry. Now we're going to put this all together. So now if you look at our, all of our sketch relations, we have a lot of them in here. We have uh, two midpoint relationships in here. We have a bunch of uh, coincident relationships. We also have a vertical and a horizontal one. If you take your cursor and rest over each one of those, it tells you what's involved with those sketch relations. So remember these sketch relations and what they do. Vertical, horizontal, coincident, coincident, midpoint, coincident up here. Those are going to be test questions on Monday, so make sure you understand those. Okay, so this isn't quite done. We still need a circle down here. So we're going to click on this circle, control key, click on that center line, go up here to our sketch toolbar, sketch tab up here in the command manager, and we're going to mirror that entity down there. So now we have yet another one. Symmetric. It's symmetric. So we have two symmetrics up here. We have a symmetric here in the middle, and it kind of shows you when you click on those symmetric entities, and it's a uh, you know, showing the center point of the circles as well as the circles themselves, what's being affected by it, and those are uh, kind of highlighted to you with a magenta color. So, number of different sketch relations you're going to need to know for Monday. Symmetric is the last one that we're going to be uh, looking at. So now we get to do something with it. Let's go to Features, Extruded Cut, and we're going to go, uh, we're going to tell it to be, we could do blind, but through wall probably be the best intent. Go to the green check mark, now we have those holes in place. So mass properties, again, let's go ahead and check that and make sure we have that correct. Let's put this on this side, we'll put a drawing on the other side and see if we got that correct. So with the back holes, that should be 599.188, which we got. And then the center of gravity has moved just slightly a little bit. Center of gravity here is going to be a 6.719, negative 6.719. So we got that correct. And let's go ahead and close that out. Okay, so let's look at our drawing one more time and take a look at where we're at with this. We only have one more element going here. It's going to be our side holes, which are going to be these square holes. We're going to put those square holes in in a location in a very similar manner as our, uh, as our back holes. So... And if we take a look at the, the different dimensions in our drawer, we pretty much have a lot of this covered. We have the 48-inch one, we have the hole over here, the shell thickness, the 95-millimeter dimension on the bottom, the 102 over here on the side, 76-millimeter one. The only things we have left to consider are going to be these two squares, which are going to be 15 millimeters uh, each. It's going to be offset by 10 millimeters from the back, and it's going to be 12 mi millimeters from the bottom. And we also have that fillet uh, already incorporated, too. So these three dimensions incorporated into our model is going to help us finish our model. So let's do this. We're going to go ahead and sketch on, and we can do it two different ways. We can sketch it on this uh, surface over here, or we can sketch it on the plane that's right in the middle. So as an alternative, because uh, on another uh, model I'm going to show you, we're going to go ahead and sketch it on the planes in the middle in order to make sure that the holes come out right. But for this one, we can probably just sketch in this surface over here. So we're going to go ahead and select 
this surface over here. And before we do this, let's go ahead and rename our holes. I forgot to do that. So we're going to call this back holes. Just like it uh, says in the drawing. So we're going to call that back holes. And now we're going to go ahead and select them to this surface. Go to sketch. We're going to put in some reference geometry. And now we're going to go to center line. And if it doesn't uh, line up for you, so it's parallel to the screen, if you do control key and the number 8, let's try that again, control 8, okay, let's select this surface because there are multiple surfaces in here, and do control 8, oh man, it's not going to do it, control 8, there we go, that'll probably do it. It'll work in your computer. It's not uh, working on my computers because I have another command for that. But Control A will make that uh, normal too. So we're going to go ahead and uh, select that surface. Again, we're going to start with some center lines. And this time we don't necessarily have to go through the origin. But if you pick up that midpoint relationship on this edge and sketch a center point or a center line out there, now we have a line that we could use to mirror from one side to the other. And now we can go in here and go to uh, perhaps a uh, corner rectangle. And sketch our rectangle out. We're going to exaggerate that a little bit because we know it's going to be a square. But this is what we're going to do. We're going to take this edge and this edge and we're going to make those equal to each other. And then we're going to take a smart dimension and we're going to dimension that and it looks like the value of that dimension is going to be 15. So it's going to be 15 millimeters. So now we have a 15 millimeter square. That's blue. It's got motion to it so it can move around a little bit. And now we're going to define that a little bit better. So the other dimensions we're going to put in, we're going to go between that edge and that surface over here. And it says that that's going to be 10, 10 millimeters from the back. So you notice that some of this is turning black, some of it's still blue. The blue can still move around. The black lines cannot move around, although the endpoints can. So we're going to put in a dimension over here. We're going to make this uh, between that edge and this edge. And we're going to make that 12. So now it's black fully defined. We're going to take this square over here. We can select it with the selection box or as an alternative, if you right click on that line, select chain. It selects everything over here and now we're going to, with the control key to press, click on that center line, go up here to mirror entities. And now we have that same square on top. Everything's black, fully defined. That's a test question. What does it mean to be fully defined? And now it's going to be ready to go. When it's fully defined, a visual indicator is that you have nothing blue in, the, in your sketch. Although you're allowed to have a blue endpoint on that line. And it's always a good idea when you're putting a center line in here, and you can have a blue endpoint to a center line, just one, that uh, you don't intersect the model. You don't want to pick up the midpoint relationship there necessarily, but kind of exaggerate that and pull that off the model. It's a little bit easier to see if you do that. Okay, so now that we have that in place, if we go to Features, Extruded Cut, we're going to make it through wall again, not blind, because blind's only going to go about halfway. We're going to make sure it's through wall and go to the green check mark. Now we have that in place. So it goes through the whole model. And with our cut extrude down here, we're going to go ahead and rename that. Get in the habit of renaming, renaming your features. This is going to be called side holes. Okay, mass properties. So the last thing we're going to do here, we're going to go to the evaluate tab, go to mass properties. It's going to remember our settings, and we have a value of 578.058 grams. Let's see if we have that in our drawing. This says it's 578.058. We got that right. And then our Z is off by just a little bit more because we were putting holes in the back, so it's shifting a bit. So it's 6.727 in the negative, and that's what we have here too. Okay, make sure you save that file. Don't save it over your uh, part file, template file. But save that as your junction box, and you'll be ready to go for Monday.